Welcome to a new planetary and seismic update. In the previous time frame that I showed you on the SSGI graph in the previous update, we've seen pretty strong seismic activity, quite some seismic unrest and also obvious clustering of strong earthquakes. If you look at the SSGI graph, magnitude 5.6 and larger, we see a, a really strong cluster of stronger earthquakes uh, on the 3rd and 4th following a planetary conjunction involving Mercury. I marked that with the uh, red label Mercury Earth Neptune later on the 2nd and as you can see uh, hours later on the 3rd uh, the first magnitude 6 earthquake occurred at the Izu Islands Japan and that really kicked off a swarm of stronger earthquakes in the region. And then uh, we see a second even stronger uh, cluster of earthquakes that uh, includes a 6.7 and 6.8 um, that was yesterday and as you can see it followed on a planetary conjunction again with Mercury's Mercury Sun Saturn and also unfortunately uh, deadly earthquakes in Afghanistan 6.2, 6.4, 6.5 is the current estimate. The planetary conjunctions involving Mercury are not to be underestimated. Mercury is small, it is smaller than Jupiter's largest moon Ganymede, but it is 45% more massive, it is highly conductive, and it influences the entire solar system uh, electromagnetically, uh, strong electrical currents, and it also affects Earth's atmosphere and Earth's crust, and we base this on our observations and also on statistics. So uh, we have this very strong clustering of earthquakes. Um, we can say that uh, stronger earthquakes, 5 to 6 magnitude, let's say 5.6 to 6 magnitude, they occur very frequently. Yes, if we average that out, they happen frequently. But in reality, as we can see, they tend to cluster. And that is very uh, important to realize. We see the earthquake in Afghanistan and uh, we had uh, atmospheric fluctuations on both sides of that region. The first fluctuations occurred on the 30th of, of September and another uh, fluctuation occurred on the 4th of October and um, the earthquake pretty much occurred in between. Uh, the thing is we cannot really uh, isolate the exact location. There is uncertainty with these atmospheric fluctuations so we always emphasize that uh, these fluctuations, the marked regions on the map are approximations. It's very important to realize. Then there were two uh, really strong earthquakes, 6.7, 6.8 in eastern New Guinea region uh, that followed on the strong activity, seismic activity in Afghanistan. And um, you may recall that on the September 23rd we had uh, fluctuations that were marked as really strong and that there could be major seismic activity and these strong earthquakes were pretty close. So um, we had quite some seismic activity in this previous time frame. So let's have a look at uh, what we're going to have in the uh, next time frame. This is from today up until uh, 17 October. We're going to have really critical planetary geometry. As you can see here on this SGI graph overview, uh, I labeled the planetary conjunctions. Uh, tomorrow morning, uh, within several hours already, we have Sun, Venus, Uranus, and that is a critical conjunction. And uh, it will be followed uh, 24 hours later by Venus, Earth, Saturn, which in itself is not too critical, but the Moon is playing a major role here because uh, hours after Earth is between Venus and Saturn, there will be a conjunction with a lunar conjunction with Venus and Saturn as well. So that will make things more critical. And then on the 11th, 3rd, um, 11, 12, that is at midnight, uh, at the end of the 11th and then early on the 12th, within one hour we have two planetary conjunctions and that is a very critical convergence involving Mercury and Venus. We see this in the solar system. Uh, I marked the planetary conjunctions with red lines and the lunar conjunctions with green lines. And as you can see on the 9th, the Sun-Venus-Uranus conjunction followed uh, the next day by Venus-Earth-Saturn. And then two lunar conjunctions critical with Saturn and Venus. And then on the 11th and 12th, you see within one hour, we have uh, Mercury-Venus-Jupiter. Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Mercury and Venus both involved in one conjunction and then within one hour Mercury, Sun and Neptune. And this combination is really critical. Statistically we can have 
a really major seismic event, easily 7.5 or 7.8 or even larger, following that planetary geometry. And of course, the two planetary conjunctions on the 9th and 10th also count. So from the 9th to the 12th, we have four planetary conjunctions. It reminds me a bit of the planetary configuration that we had in August 2021. Um, that was from uh, on 9 and the 10th of uh, Oct uh, August 2021. In particular, we had also a very critical convergence. And that also started a few days earlier with uh, Sun, uh, Venus and Uranus conjunction. And then from the 11th to the 14th, which was the critical time that we marked specifically, we had five magnitude 7 earthquakes and probably one of the strongest clustering uh, in recent times. So this is to demonstrate what critical planetary geometry actually can do. So um, we could see something similar in the coming days, or let's say uh, after that planetary geometry occurred, it will be from the 12th to the 16th approximately. That is probably going to be the most critical time. And uh, depending on the condition of Earth's crust, these are the stress levels, uh, there can be pretty strong seismic activity, multiple stronger events around the globe, and we could see one or two magnitude 7 earthquakes as a result, maybe a stronger uh, uh, earthquake as well. Uh, and here we see uh, also from a different viewpoint, the two planetary conjunctions on 11, 12 October, uh, Mercury, Venus and Jupiter, and also Mercury, Sun, Neptune. And as you can see, we have a lunar conjunction there as well. That's uh, Moon, Earth, Neptune, following the Mercury, Sun, Neptune conjunction. This is a convergence of really critical planetary and lunar geometry. Uh, again, from the 12th to the 16th is probably most critical and we could see really big seismic activity as a result. Now, on the 14th, we have a new moon, and it also happens to be an annular solar eclipse. And I would like to emphasize here, even though uh, the planetary geometry on 11, 12 October can result in a major seismic event around the 14th, it is not the eclipse that will trigger the seismic event, because a new moon or a full moon on its own does not uh, cause large earthquakes. It requires critical planetary geometry like we have on 11, 12 October in particular. That is the catalyst that will trigger larger seismic activity. So I emphasize this, it will not be because of the eclipse on the 14th. It just so happens that the critical planetary geometry on 11, 12 October will be followed by uh, an annular solar eclipse on the 14th. If you look at atmospheric fluctuations, uh, yesterday we had again some uh, fluctuations marking regions uh, a bit north uh, of uh, the regions that were recently hit by an earthquake in Afghanistan, so there would be uh, a little bit to the north, and also uh, possibly along the, uh, the Andaman Islands and Sumatra and down below or south of Australia. This fluctuation was not very strong, it was somewhat similar to what we recorded earlier, um, marking the regions uh, near Afghanistan and Pakistan. So uh, most likely this could indicate uh, an earthquake in the six magnitude range, possibly around mid six. It wasn't too strong. So I don't think, uh, even though I marked the regions near Sumatra, I don't think that it will trigger a mega frost earthquake. It was a significant, or, or let's say an obvious atmospheric fluctuation, but it was not a big one. Then I also marked regions uh, on uh, the 6th of October, that was uh, an, an obvious drop of electrical charge in the atmosphere and that could indicate a larger earthquake and I marked the regions uh, near Kamchatka, a little bit to the uh, east, the Red Islands and also to the south, uh, that is the, um, uh, along the Kuril Islands and also down uh, to uh, near the Samoa Islands, Tonga in the Pacific, that could also easily include the Loyalty Islands by the way and uh, further south on the Pacific Antarctic Ridge. This is uh, what we have so far. Um, of course, we keep monitoring the atmosphere and if new updates are available, you will find them on the website and also in our social media. This is the update for now. Stay safe. Until next time.